Hello Goldstreamers, my name is Ricardo Cheng and I want to welcome you to tonight's video tutorial on how to request a cruising permit with the Bahamas Customs electronic clearance system known as Click to Clear. Tonight we will go over on how to access the online system, log in and create an inbound declaration, pay for the declaration and print out a copy of the cruising permit. Now for those of you who may have gone to the Bahamas and cleared before using another system called Go Outdoor Bahamas, I know what you're thinking. Why can't I just go into Go Outdoor Bahamas and submit a new cruising permit? Well, the short answer is that as of April the 22nd of this year, when I crossed over with some fellow Gulf streamers, we were explicitly told by the Bahamian customs officials that they now require click to clear as opposed to Go Outdoor Bahamas. I am not sure of any details behind the scenes, but I know that click to clear is a government owned system while Go Outdoor Bahamas is a third party vendor. It is also important to note that even though in your inbound declaration you are specifying passenger and crew information, click to clear is strictly customs related. It is not immigration. For clearing immigration, the captain will still be required to fill out individual paper immigration cards for every passenger or crew member on the boat, which can only be obtained from the immigration officials and a single form called the Inward Passenger and Crew Manifest. The, Im the immigration cards are individually serialized with a number and barcode, so they cannot be copied. They must be original forms, and I do advise to ask for extra during your time with the immigration officer to use for your next trip. Lastly, when printing out anything for customs or immigration, including the inward word passenger and crew manifest, please make it easier for the immigration officer and make sure you print out on legal size paper. In summary, you are required to have the following to clear Bahamian customs and immigration. A valid U.S. passport or international passport with green card for those who are not U.S. citizens for every passenger and crew member on your boat. And no, you cannot travel on an expired passport or birth certificate. Two, immigration arrival cards for every passenger and crew member on your boat. Again, only original forms are accepted. Three, one copy of the inward passenger and crew manifest for pleasure vessels printed on legal paper size. Four, one copy of the cruising permit for clearing your vessel and crew from customs. And five, one copy of your boat state or U.S. Coast Guard registration. For the purpose of this video's tutorial on creating an inward declaration, you will need an electronic copy of your boat state or U.S. Coast Guard registration. Pictures are okay, but a PDF copy is highly recommended. You will also need each passenger's or crew member's passport. The first page is sufficient so you can grab the person's information. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the process. So we will start at the Bahamas Customs and Excise Department Click to Clear website. Uh, for those of you that do not know the address to this, you can open up a um, Google window and type in Bahamas, click to clear. And the results should take you to the Bahamas click to clear website. Now that being said, it says here that you must re first register online at the following address. However, this is only required if you are a commercial operator or individual importing items into the Bahamas. In this case, we are pleasure boaters. So what we do is we click on cruising permit here at the top. Once this website opens, we can go ahead and we can click here to log in. This will open up the click to clear website. From here, we again, we do not have to put in a username or a password or register. From here, we request a cruising permit. Finally, this will open up the cruise click to clear window where we are able to go ahead and open an inbound declaration.
That being said, I just want to go over how this is laid out. The left side is your navigation. The right side is where you input your information. So in this case, we are going to expand Pleasure Craft and we are going to go ahead and we are going to create an inbound. Okay, so the Create Pleasure Craft window is open. As you can see, this form is divided with tabs across the top. So we have the header, we have the maritime declaration, the vessel details, the crew passenger details, stores on board and other documents and summary. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will go through every single one of these tabs because they are required to be filled out in order to be able to pay for the cruising permit and then be able to print it out. In this first header tab, we are required to put in our vessel registration number, owner name, address, vessel name, all these fields that are marked with a red asterisk, these are the ones that are required and I will go over in detail on how to fill these out. Once you fill them out and click on save, you will be presented with a PCR or rotation number and that is what you are going to use to log in to click to clear and be able to search for your inbound if you ever need to print it or clone it or ever need to look for information on it. So please be sure to save the PCR or rotation number in a safe place because you will need it. Okay, through some movie magic, I was able to bring up my PCR number, which is um, you can see here on the screen. So as you can see, we have our rotation number, which begins with PCR, our vessel registration number, or in my case, my FL number, my name, my address, the vessel name, where the vessel is registered, my telephone number, the date of arrival in Bahamas. So in this case, it's June 11th at 10 a.m. because I estimate that we're leaving at 7 a.m that day and please note that Bahamas follows the order of day, month, and year. Not the other way around as in the US here we follow month, day, and year. Again, Bahamas follows day, month, and year. So that would be our date of arrival. Then we have our intended date of departure. When are we leaving the Bahamas? So in this case, our trip is from June 11th through June 18th. I estimate that we will be leaving at 9 a.m. And again, this doesn't have to be exact. Um, you know, just ballpark is all they're looking for. Um, more information about my arrival. We have here that we're going to be arriving at our port of arrival is Bimini. Our customs port of arrival is Big A Marina. The previous country, where did I come from prior to entering the Bahamas? I came from the United States. Our next country, where are we going after the Bahamas? We are, going to, we are going to go back to the United States of America. My previous port. What port was I before I visited the Bahamas? Well, in this case, I was located in the United States and my previous port is Pompano Beach because that's where my boat is located. For you guys, it's going to be Fort Lauderdale if you're leaving from Harbor Town. Um, anyway, our next country again, this is where, where we're returning to. In this case, uh, my next port after after this trip to Bahamas, the next port is going to be Fort Lauderdale in the United States and then my email address. The next tab is going to be the Maritime Declaration. This is where they want us to declare anyone that has been sick or you know has an infectious disease, yellow fever, smallpox. In most cases, your answer to these questions is going to be no. There is a hidden section here called the Port of Call List which is where they want the last six ports you visited prior to arriving in the Bahamas. In my case, it's the Sun Harbor Marina, which is where I keep my boat in the US. And um, I arrived at that marina. I arrived at six in the morning and I left at seven in the morning. So here, I just wanna edit this so you see how you fill this out. So basically you look for the US, look for your home port. In my case it's Pompano Beach. 
in your case, it will be Fort Lauderdale. The place will be Harbor Town Marina for yourself. The time that you arrive, the date, and the date of departure. The next tab is the vessel details. So in this tab, we're going to enter in details about the vessel. So in my case, I have a GPS. The purpose of my visit is pleasure and recreation. My boat is made out of fiberglass. The year was built. Because I'm not a sailboat, I don't have any mass, and I'm a center console, so no cabins. Value of my vessel, I value it at 90,000. Um, number of inboard engines, I have zero inboards. However, I have two outboards. Registration certificate, the reading exemption. It says it's a document that corroborates a ship's compliance with maritime. I don't think this is applicable to me. It doesn't have a red asterisk, so I did not fill it in. Pleasure craft, vessel type, my home port, what color is the hull, gross tonnage. Now this one is a little bit interesting because gross tonnage is defined as a nonlinear measure of a ship's overall internal volume. So the gross tonnage is actually different from the weight of your boat. It has to do more with the internal volume. Now the US Coast Guard has published a whole guide on how to calculate the gross tonnage, just know that there are multiple uh, formulas. One of them is the simplified formula. It's quite complex, so I'm not going to get into that in this uh, tutorial. However, my boat is a 24 feet boat. I googled what is an average gross tonnage for a vessel of my size, and I got seven. So I've been to the Bahamas already maybe two or three times, and this has never been a problem. And that's basically what I put in um, for your vessel. Of course, that could be different. However, seven seems to be a safe number. Number of decks. I only have one deck. I already said that my boat is 24 feet. The width is nine, nine feet, the beam. And I have two outboard engines. And again, just like the other tab, this particular tab has another hidden section here, which is your engine details. This is where you input the brand name and the horsepower for each one of your outboard or inboard engines. And if I edit this, you can see here that I can select from outboard inboard and I can type in the brand name as well as the horse horsepower. Once I'm done, I can hit I can hit update and close and we'll be done with this tab. The fourth tab we have to fill out is the crew and passenger details. So here you have a listing of all your crew and passengers. Now for the purpose of a pleasure vessel, I don't think the distinction matters. However, I would imagine it does have an effect on any charter operations going into and out of the Bahamas. As you can see, um, Ricardo Cheng, I am the master or the captain of the vessel and everybody else I have categorized them as crew. You can see here we have the first name, the last name, the passport, and nationality. Now, if you want to enter in anybody in your party, you would just have to click on this plus sign and you would have to fill out the information that is requested here. Remember, everything with a red asterisk is mandatory. It is also good to note that this tab will determine how much you will pay to enter the Bahamas. Now I understand that for a vessel under 30 feet is $150 and that includes three crew or passenger members including the captain. In my case I have four. So for every additional person in addition to the $150 every additional person will add on $20. So for me my total price that I will pay will be $170. Tab number five deals with stores on board and other, meaning anything that we want to declare to customs. So if we click on this plus sign, we're able to select what we want to import or declare into the Bahamas. So if you choose live animals, this would be if you're bringing in a pet. However, the caveat is that it requires special permits that I understand take a while and are very expensive to obtain. Um, there's usually services I've seen out there that um, 
do it for you and they just, you know, you pay a fee and they may mail you out a, a permit. Um, none, if you're not going to be bringing in anything. In my case, I chose none, as you can see. So I don't have anything to declare. Uh, weapons. This is a very controversial topic. So I'm not going to discuss whether you're, you know, pro weapons or, or, or not. Um, I am going to discuss from a Bahamas point of view, you know, what it looks like. So my understanding and, you know, based on, on what I've been able to research is that you are able to bring in a weapon into the Bahamas. However, please, please, please read and research this topic thoroughly before you do so. Because my understanding is that you have to declare the weapon, count the exact number of ammunition that you carry with you, and they wanna, they wanna see that you leave with the same amount of ammunition, meaning you haven't fired a single round. You also have to have a cabin boat. Center consoles are not eligible for this. And the reason being is that they don't consider the helm or the center console to be a secure location. On a cabin boat, they want the weapon to be stored under lock and key. Now, again, this is just a 50,000 foot view. Don't take anything that I say as legal advice. Um, please, please, please research this topic before you bring a weapon into the Bahamas. For the sake of simplicity, I don't recommend bringing a weapon. It really speeds things up when you don't. You're not boarded. You know, you don't have to count the ammunition. And um, also, if there's an emergency, I understand that you must leave your weapon at the police station where they do God knows what with it, you know, whether they dry fire or not. And then you have to fly back to get it. So I don't recommend you bring in a weapon into the Bahamas. It's, um, I've never heard of anyone having any issues with crime, you know, pirates, piracy. We're going to be in a large group. So I really don't think that it is needed. Anyway, that being said, in my case, I chose none and went on to the next tab to tab number six, which is deal with documents. So this is where we're going to submit that registration document that, um, you know, FL, the vessel registration number or the U.S. Coast Guard registration. In my case, I um, went on here and, you know, I, I chose a file, even though it says no file chosen, I did upload my file. As you can see here, it has a little green download, right? It says PDF there. Um, and remarks, right? A description of what I'm, what, what I'm uploading. So in this case, it's a U.S. Florida registration doc document. Um, and as you can see, acceptable formats are PDF, JPEGs, one of these JPEG formats. Now, in your case, you may also see a second document here relating to COVID. Uh, I believe it's the, I'm not sure if it's the health attestation. That has been eliminated by the Bahamas. You can safely click on the three little dots and delete that out of your view. And finally, the last tab, tab number seven, which is summary. So this, in this tab is where you're going to be able to see the header details that you entered in tab number one, along with all the information. So as of to basically confirm that the information is correct, there's also going to be a validation button down here. So if you're missing any, any information in any of the tabs, it won't validate and it will not let you move forward. So in my case, if I click validate, you can see that everything has validated in all the tabs. So I can go ahead and I can move on to the next step, which is to submit. Now, why do I have a passenger fee of only $20 when I spoke about also having to pay $150? Well, this has to do with the fact that the Bahamas lets you re-enter 
the country without having to pay the $150 fee if you re-enter within 90 days of your last entry, of your last paid entry. The only thing that is not covered is the additional passengers. As you recall, the $150 only covers up to three crew or passenger members. In my case, I have four. So I don't get charged the $150 because again, this is my second re-entry in less than 90 days. But however, I do have to pay the passenger fee. So when you are ready to submit, you click on submit. I have not clicked on submit because I'm not sure if there's going to be any other crew or passengers. If that's the case, I would need to go back to tab number four, add them, click the, you know, go back to tab number seven, click the validate button, and then I will see that my passenger fee is 40 or 60 or however number of extra passengers I am going to be bringing them along. So the only other thing I need to say about this is that really they need to receive this information at least 24 hours prior to your arrival in Bimini. I like to do it at least 48 hours or, or more. Um, so as I get closer to the date of departure and when my plans have finalized in terms of crew and passenger details, I will go on ahead and click submit and then I will pay for this cruising permit. Lastly, I want to go over how to search for your inbound declaration at a later time when you come back to submit it and uh, pay for your um, cruising permit. So what you do is once you're logged into click to clear, you expand pleasure graph, you click on search inbound, under registration type, you choose existing. In your rotation number, you input your PCR number. In your vessel number, you put in your FL number or your US Coast Guard number, whatever you used. In the uh, inward declaration is what you put in here. Now, one caveat, you need to type this in exactly how you typed it into the inbound declaration. So if you use lowercase, for your vessel registration number, then you use lowercase in the screen. If you use uppercase, then you use uppercase. Once you input the information, you can go ahead and click submit, which opens up your inbound declaration. And again, you see here the header tab, which is tab number one. However, uh, you can go ahead, you can update your crew and passenger details. And then as a last step, click on the last tab here, number seven. Click on validate and then submit your inbound declaration. I really hope this has been informative for you guys and let me know if you guys have any questions.